Okay. Why don't we get started? Uh, so welcome to a new semester of uh, IQIS seminars. And it's my great pleasure to kick off uh, this semester's uh, seminar series with an exciting speaker in Andre Ferron. Uh, Andre earned his bachelor's in physics from Caltech in 2004 before moving to Stanford and earning a master's in electrical engineering and a PhD in applied physics uh, while working in the lab of uh, Yelena Vukovic. He worked as a postdoc at HP Labs from 2009 to 2012, and then began his independent career at Caltech, where he currently holds the title of Professor of Applied Physics and Electrical Engineering. Uh, he's a winner of numerous awards, including an NSF career, uh, an uh, Air Force uh, YIP, and an ONR uh, Young Investigator Award as well, all as a junior faculty member. And more recently, he won the uh, Adolf Lohm Medal of the Optical Society of America, uh, which recognizes uh, noteworthy contributions to optics from an early career researcher. And last year, he was elected a fellow of the OSA. His group's research relates to various technologies relevant to both classical and uh, quantum nanophotonics, the latter of which I think we'll hear about uh, today. So please help me uh, in welcoming Andre. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much for inviting me to speak. So I'm the first speaker in the, in the series? Uh, of, this, of this semester, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so um, just to make sure, so this uh, the community is uh, focused on quantum um, uh, uh, quantum technologies and quantum science, right? For for this seminar. Okay, great. Um, yeah. So today I will talk about our uh, work on developing uh, optical quantum networks based on uh, rare earth ions and um, uh, nanophotonics. And um, to uh, uh, start, I'd like to give an uh, overview of the research that is going on in my group on, uh, around this topic. So we do uh, optics uh, or photonics, and uh, uh, the best thing that uh, uh, photons are good for uh, for quantum technologies is uh, uh, interconnects. Uh, so, for example, if you have a quantum uh, computer, and this can be uh, something like a superconducting uh, computer, and let's say that you inter want to interconnect it with another uh, quantum computer, uh, you will need uh, some devices in the form of uh, uh, the quantum transducers. For example, a uh, quantum computer operates in the microwave domain, uh, and uh, you'll need to transduce single photons from the optical domain to, from the microwave to optical domain uh, that you can send uh, in an optical fiber. And then at the other uh, end, you can uh, interconnect it to another uh, quantum computer, also via another uh, transducer. Now, if this optical fiber link uh, is short, you can just use a single optical fiber. Uh, however, if you uh, have a very long uh, optical fiber link, then you need to uh, break it into uh, segments. And these segments are linked with what we call uh, quantum uh, repeater nodes. And uh, you can view these quantum repeater nodes as small uh, quantum machines or quantum computing devices. And their sole purpose is to distribute entanglement between uh, the, uh, the ends of the segments of, of the network and in the end uh, between the uh, ends of the, uh, of the entire network. And in my group, we are we're developing uh, the science and technology that would allow us to build uh, devices that uh, you may find at all the stations in the optical uh, quantum uh, network. Uh, the focus uh, of um, this talk and a lot of work in my group is based on uh, lanthanides or rare earth ions. So we're trying to make uh, these transducers or uh, 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 the elements for quantum repeaters based on rare earth ions. Uh, for example, these are some images of uh, devices that we develop in our group uh, for quantum transduction. This is uh, a tra transducer based on ytterbium, doped in trimortovanadate. Uh, this is a more advanced device, which is based on uh, erbium that interconnect, uh, uh, that uh, is composed of superconducting uh, devices. The interjected pattern is actually uh, a superconducting capacitor. Uh, also photonic uh, devices that are linked together via uh, erbium atoms that are actually doped inside the, uh, the substrate. Uh, the quantum repeater node, you may uh, see devices that look uh, like this. Uh, and uh, these are uh, uh, photonic crystal uh, resonators uh, that uh, are, again are uh, uh, doped or contain uh, uh, elements like erbium, neodymium, uh, ytterbium. And uh, this kind of devices 
uh, work as either optical quantum memories that can be used to uh, control the flow of single photons on the network, uh, or they can be used as a single optically addressable uh, quantum bits. Uh, and uh, these are the main elements that are used in a quantum repeater nodes in, or in order to to uh, uh, to distribute entanglement along at long distances. Uh, today, I will uh, I think I'll have a mini time to talk about our work on a single optical addressable uh, uh, quantum bits, and we have some exciting new results in this uh, area where, where we show uh, storage and and to, uh, nuclear spin uh, spin waves or, or nuclear magnets. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see how it goes. But if I have time, I may may. Uh, also uh, discuss about quantum transducers and uh, also optical quantum uh, memories. So uh, in terms of uh, building optical quantum re repeater uh, networks, I should say that there has been recently a very nice result from, from Delft uh, where uh, they have used the uh, MV centers uh, in Diamond uh, to, uh, to, to show the, for the first time a multi-node uh, a quantum network. In this case, it's a, uh, it's a three uh, node uh, quantum network. And actually the leap from two nodes to, to, to three nodes is, is, is very significant because they have, there is a middle node which actually has a very special design that uh, needs to be used in order to distribute the entanglement. So uh, in this uh, uh, network, uh, they had uh, uh, three uh, uh, diamonds with three MV centers, one of the uh, Alice, uh, one of Charlie and uh, one at uh, Bob. And uh, the Bob is the middle node. And what's special about the middle node is that the MV center is also coupled to a memory qubit, which is uh, 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 carbon-13 uh, 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 nucleus. Um, so the entanglement is done between uh, Alice, uh, Bob, and Charlie. So they have shown that you can either uh, create uh, entanglement between all these three uh, uh, MV centers, or also you can use entanglement swapping at uh, the uh, node of uh, Bob in order to produce entanglement between Alice and uh, uh, and Charlie. So this is a very nice uh, demonstration, uh, very impressive work that uh, uh, kind of serves as a blueprint of uh, how we can uh, uh, think about uh, designing uh, uh, future optical uh, uh, quantum networks and advancing uh, this type of uh, uh, technology technology can be done either using MV centers or by looking uh, to other uh, defects uh, in, uh, in solids. Uh, and uh, regarding MV centers, the main challenge is moving uh, forward is the MV center optical uh, stability. Uh, just to remind everyone, the MV center is um, a center uh, in diamond where you have uh, uh, two vacancies and one of the vacancies is replaced with a, a nitrogen and the other one uh, is an empty uh, 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 location, so it's a, st still a vacancy, and basically uh, you have this center, which kind of looks like a more like a molecule in a, in a, uh, in the crystal that uh, is used to uh, to create spin phot photon uh, entanglement and, and and spin spin uh, entanglement. Uh, however, uh, due to the symmetry of this. Um, uh, of this uh, uh, center, uh, there are some issues with the MV center optical stability, uh, and this is something that actually I, uh, I myself worked on when I was at HP Lab. So these are actually some uh, photonic crystal uh, resonators that I uh, fabricated when I was at, uh, uh, at HP Labs, and we measured what we call spectral diffusion uh, in MV center. So basically, we look at an optical transition. So this is this uh, 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 axis here is. Uh, uh, free optical frequency, uh, this axis is time. And basically what you see, you see two uh, broad uh, lines here on the order of like tens of uh, uh, gigahertz. And this means that we are monitoring two MV centers uh, 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 in time, we're monitoring their optical frequency and we observe that they have severe spectral uh, diffusion. And this is very large, uh, it's very uh, difficult to, uh, to, to control. Uh, so, uh, uh, for this reason, uh, so far there haven't been con very conclusive demonstration of of uh, MV centers that are coupled to nanophotonic uh, devices uh, in order to uh, enhance the, the the single photon rates that are required to to further advance uh, uh, optical quantum networks based on uh, MV centers. Um, now, uh, a group of Delft is looking at other types of uh, devices like uh, MV centers uh, in uh, thicker uh, diamond uh, membranes, uh, and uh, these are coupled to, to fiber-based uh, uh, cavities, and they have some uh, quite good uh, success, and uh, it's showing a partial enhancement of uh, 
of uh, of the uh, centers coupled to uh, to uh, to this cavity. Uh, however, it's still uh, not clear uh, how how much this uh, technology can be advanced uh, further. So, because of these difficulties with with MV centers, the community is looking to uh, other uh, uh, color centers in uh, in solids that uh, could be used uh, for optical quantum uh, networks. Um, so, uh, as I said, the MV center has this uh, difficulty of uh, of scaling because when you couple it to, to optical resonators that are required to to enhance the the photon rate, you have um, issues with the stability. Uh, for the silicon vacancy, the, another center that uh, uh, has been investigated is the silicon vacancy center uh, in Diamond, and this one has very good optical properties and high cooperativity in uh, nanophotonic resonators. This is a direction pushed by uh, the looking group at, at Harvard. Uh, it seems that um, they will catch up with the MVs. However, there are some challenges related to the very low temperature that is required for long spin coherence. It requires uh, uh, less than 100 uh, millikelvin and high magnetic uh, uh, fields. Also, there are some uh, uh, issues in, in uh, how to actually uh, couple it to, to auxiliary memories like the carbon uh, uh, 13 while also doing uh, very good uh, uh, readout of the silicon vacancy uh, center. So, um, uh, so this uh, platform is is, is, uh, is is moving forward. Also, there are other defects in diamond and silicon carbide that are currently being uh, uh, research. There is a tin vacancy center uh, in Diamond and several other in silicon carbide that also look uh, uh, promising. Uh, my group and a few others uh, in the community are looking at uh, rare earth ions in the solids, uh, and these are uh, stable and robust uh, uh, quantum bits with uh, with very good uh, uh, coherence uh, that. Uh, uh, I think have uh, uh, the prospect to uh, to be a very competitive technology uh, with uh, defects in diamond or, or silicon uh, carbide. Uh, a few words about uh, lanthanides or rare earths. So uh, they are these elements in the periodic uh, table, and they can be doped in, in crystals uh, like yttrium ortosilicate, yttrium ortovanadate, or YAG. These are uh, laser uh, crystals that uh, are quite uh, uh, common in the, uh, in, in, in the community. Um, the reason why they are, uh, uh, the lanthanides are, are somewhat special is because they have a, a, a xenon core uh, followed by a 4F orbital, which is not uh, completely filled, uh, followed by a 5S and a 5P uh, orbital, and they are uh, uh, completely uh, filled. Uh, and within the 4F orbital, especially when you uh, put this, um, uh, these elements into a crystal, uh, you can have optical uh, uh, transitions. And uh, these uh, transitions are highly coherent, uh, highly radiative. At the same time, they are weak because uh, actually these transitions are, are forbidden. So only when you put them in a crystal field that breaks the symmetry, uh, you can uh, have some partially allowed uh, uh, emission. Uh, also, I like to say that uh, uh, what I like about this um, uh, uh, transitions that are very stable. So all the transitions are confined within the 4F uh, uh, orbital. Uh, so uh, there is not much uh, uh, blinking that is associated, for example, in other centers where, where you lose an electron or you, the charging state uh, uh, change. Uh, for for lanthanides, everything is very, very uh, uh, stable. Uh, however, you have to deal with the fact that you do have weak optical uh, transitions. Uh, since the, all the transitions happen within this 4F uh, uh, orbital, so they don't depend that much on the, uh, on the uh, environment of the crystalline environment. Uh, in the sense that what I mean, by, what I mean by, by not much is that if you take, for example, erbium and uh, you put it in different crystals, you're always going to see, for example, a, a transition at uh, 1550 uh, nanometers happening between this uh, two manifold of states, 4i 15 halves and 4i uh, uh, 13 halves. Now, the exact uh, selection rules and how this manifold split, of course, depend on the crystal structure, but uh, it, uh, you're always going to have a transition at 1550, regardless of where you put uh, 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 erbium. Uh, so the, for this uh, reason, this uh, 
a system of rare earth is really like an truly like an atom that is embedded in a solid, solid and the properties of these atoms are are very similar as you move from one host to uh, to the other so these are some uh, typical transitions that we see in uh, in rare earth so this is uh, say this is a 1550 transition in erbium uh, this is a 980 transition uh, in ytterbium that uh, uh, we work uh, with uh, a lot this is an 80, 80 uh, nanometers uh, transition and uh, a neodymium. So uh, our goal is to uh, develop onto repeaters with uh, rare earth uh, ions and uh, similar to the, the network uh, that we saw in, in Diamond here, the idea is to uh, have uh, three or more uh, nodes where uh, you have a uh, single rare earth ions that are coupled to uh, photonic uh, uh, resonators. Uh, and uh, they you create um, uh, in, uh, entanglement by interfering the, the photons coming from these nodes on, on beam splitters. And here at the middle node, uh, we, we like to have uh, coupling to other um, uh, auxiliary memory uh, elements. And this can be uh, elements uh, uh, in the crystal like uh, uh, vanadium or uh, yttrium, or they can be other rare ions such as uh, uh, ytterbium or erbium or uh, other rare earths. So uh, I think the key message of, uh, of the, my talk is that uh, rare earths uh, have uh, all the ingredients uh, for multi-node uh, quantum networks. Uh, so they have stable and coherent uh, optical transitions when coupled to photonic resonators. This is something that we showed in a paper uh, last year. Uh, also, they have long spin coherence times of tens of milliseconds. Uh, this is also uh, was uh, uh, published last year. And most importantly, this coherence is uh, maintained up to temperatures on the order of uh, one Kelvin. So uh, we can use uh, helium-4 uh, cryostat. Uh, also, we have recently showed uh, the last missing ingredient for, for um, uh, local uh, quantum memory registers, and uh, we recently showed that we have access to uh, a, a local nuclear ensemble quantum memory uh, register, and this has been uh, posted uh, very recently on, on archive, and I invite you to uh, read the paper if you are uh, interested. Uh, regarding uh, experiments with uh, single uh, rare earth ions, I should uh, mention that uh, there is already a very healthy community uh, working in a um on this topic. So uh, this, this field has been started with direct fluorescence of detection from uh, atoms like praseodymium and uh, uh, cerium by the, the Shandogda group and the Frashtrup group in, uh, in, in, um, uh, in, in Germany. Uh, in this case, actually, they use uh, uh, direct uh, detection uh, of, uh, of these uh, atoms. Uh, and uh, uh, this means that they had to work at very low uh, uh, count rates. Uh, and however, they, they were able to, to, to get this uh, uh, det detection uh, working. However, moving forward, uh, if you want to use these uh, uh, systems into devices, it's very important to uh, couple the rare earth ions to various types of uh, photonic uh, resonators. And here I like to highlight work from the Jeff Thompson group at uh, Princeton, where they work with the uh, erbium uh, atoms. And erbium atoms are coupled to this uh, silicon Photonic uh, resonators, so they, they have a, use a hybrid platform where the where the uh, the resonator is is uh, uh, um, made out of uh, silicon and is sitting on erbium doped substrate, and the uh, and the uh, coupling happens evanescently. Uh, in our group, uh, we have mainly uh, focused on uh, neodymium and ytterbium uh, for experiments with singles. Although we also use a very similar platform as the uh, platform in Princeton for uh, working with uh, ensembles where you work on uh, quantum transduction and quantum memory uh, experiments. Um, so uh, uh, for neodymium and ytterbium, we are mainly focusing on uh, these uh, resonators that are uh, fabricated using focused uh, ion beam uh, uh, milling. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, a technique that uh, works very well uh, uh, for us, uh, especially at uh, uh, near infrared wavelength for, for coupling for ytterbium or, or uh, neodymium where you don't have access to, to silicon photonics. Uh, there are a lot of experiments uh, um, on uh, either singles or ensembles at Stuttgart, Karlsruhe, University of uh, Chicago. My former uh, postdoc, uh, Tian Zong, has beautiful results uh, also working with uh, erbium at Equal, Max Planck, and many, many other uh, universities. States. Uh, the pro pros of, and uh, Elizabeth uh, Goldschmidt, she's uh, recently started her uh, lab at, uh, at UIUC, uh, and um, I'm looking forward to see results from uh, her lab on this topic uh, as well. Um, 
so the pros for uh, uh, using uh, single uh, rare earth uh, uh, ions is that they have long spin coherence. They are optically uh, very stable. Uh, the cons uh, is that they are somewhat slower. Uh, and uh, also um, you have generally have to work in hosts, which are not as uh, uh, friendly as, uh, as diamond or for silicon carbide, for example, because generally you deal with nuclear uh, spins uh, uh, in, in these hosts. So, so uh, you have to deal with the nuclear spin environment. And here uh, today I will, will show that actually we can use it to our uh, advantage. Uh, also the crystals that we use uh, are not so pure. So uh, moving forward, higher purity crystals would be uh, needed. Uh, as I said, we work with nanophotonic resonators that are coupled to um, to the rare earths, and uh, we mainly work with uh, this uh, uh, focused ion beam milled uh, resonators. Basically, uh, they uh, have this uh, the, this triangular uh, profile, so it's a beam which has a triangular profile, and from the top we cut this uh, this uh, grooves into into the beam, uh, and this uh, uh, form a photonic uh, crystal in the longitudinal direction that can confine an uh, optical uh, mode. Uh, the reason why we like this uh, technique is that is uh, very portable, so we can uh, change easily change the crystal and also change the wavelength. So we can have made devices for you know, gynium, ytterbium, or, or, or erbium. And the parameters that, that we get are very competitive with other uh, techniques. So, uh, so we use uh, uh, quality factors on, uh, on the order of tens of uh, uh, thousands, and the mode volume is on the order of one uh, cubic uh, wavelength. Uh, another reason why we like this technique is that we can make this cuts at the end of the device. So basically, have the 45 degree uh, cuts uh, that act as total internal reflection mirror. So we have light coming in, and then it, we send light into uh, the uh, device and then we can uh, collect light either in transmission uh, or actually most of the time in uh, reflection. Uh, for those of you who want to picture this, they actually they look more like a Toblerone bar, but the cuts are done from, not from the top of the triangle, but from the base of the uh, triangle. Uh, regarding focus line beam fabrication, uh, this is something that we have to use because we work with bulk crystals, so we don't have uh, crystalline membranes that can be used in this uh, uh, fabrication. Uh, so um, we um, start with uh, uh, with a bulk piece of crystal, and then we mill two large trenches that define this tri triangular beam, and then we come from the top and, and make this. Uh, uh, this cuts and these are some pictures of the first devices that we uh, fabricate using this uh, technique. Uh, the typical experimental uh, setup uh, uh, is uh, one where we generally use a helium-3 uh, refrigerator or sometimes you use a dilution. Um, so uh, generally with a, a fridge that looks like this, there are optical fibers going inside the, the, the fridge. And then we have an aspheric uh, a doublet that uh, focuses light at the end of this device. Light is sent into the, into the cavity and then we collect back the, uh, the uh, luminescence. Uh, most recent uh, experiments actually uh, have uh, microwave control uh, as well. So there are actually two <laughs> electrodes that are placed around the, the, the device that allow us to, uh, to control uh, the uh, rare earths with microwave uh, frequencies uh, as well. And the light is collected with single photon uh, semi uh, superconducting nanowire single photon uh, detectors. <coughs> and um, this uh, uh, platform and this experimental setup was was uh, uh, pioneered by uh, by uh, Dr. Tian Zhang, uh, my former Gabby student, John Kingdom, and also uh, my uh, student, Jake Rockman, who does a lot of work on fabrication of these uh, devices. So uh, the atom that I will talk most about uh, today is uh, ytterbium. And in this case is ytterbium, actually 171 in yttrium uh, orthovanadate. Uh, and um, there are some uh, special reasons why actually we choose this, uh, this atom. So uh, as you saw in the periodic table, there are a lot of lanthanides that you can use. There are a lot of uh, of uh, uh, crystalline hosts that you can use. Uh, however, from, from all the, the uh, possible options, we have cho chosen uh, uh, ETHERB-171 in ethrium orthovanadate. Uh, and the reason uh, is the following. So uh, this crystal has only one uh, non-polar uh, D2D uh, ethrium uh, 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 site. 
And uh, uh, this means that uh, if you have this kind of uh, symmetry, there is no first order optical DC Stark shift uh, on uh, um, on any kind of uh, emitter that has this uh, kind of uh, symmetry, which means that there is uh, less uh, sensitivity in the optical uh, transition to any electric fields uh, in, in the crystal. And this is generally uh, the cause of uh, spectral diffusion or spectral uh, instability. So uh, we, uh, using the symmetry of the crystal, we, we diminish the optical instability. Also the optical uh, transitions are relatively uh, fast. And also we have access to what we call uh, micro uh, optical and microwave clock transitions where uh, the, the uh, 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 transition is not so sensitive to magnetic field uh, fluctuations. Now- uh, uh, do, Andre, can I interrupt you real quick before we get too far from the uh, fabrication? There's a couple uh, questions in the chat. Sure, uh, go ahead. Uh, so I guess I'll just read them. So from Paul Quiet, what what sort of insertion loss can you achieve, and how much is that limited by imperfections in the uh, in the FIV processing and the FIB processing? And there's another question. I had a similar question. If there are effects from the gallium implantation from the FIB process. So regarding um, um, the, the insert, is insertion loss. With these devices, generally we work with uh, a, a, say a coupling efficiency on the order of like twenty to thirty percent, and um, uh, so far, I mean, it's it, it's just it's there. There are multiple uh, effects that uh, result uh, uh, in, in this efficiency. First of all, uh, we don't have like very extremely good mode matching between the mode of the lens and this output uh, uh, coupler. It's just a simple like a forty-five degree uh, cut. Also, uh, there is reflection at uh, this uh, first uh, interface that uh, somehow needs to be engineered with the reflection from the photonic crystal in order to, in, to, to get better coupling. And that's something that we are not uh, uh, doing uh, yet. Uh, also, uh, the device needs to, need to be engineered to be critically uh, uh, coupled uh, um, in order to, uh, to, to get the highest uh, uh, efficiency. So, uh, um, uh, so, so in our case, we, we did, because of the relatively low uh, uh, duty cycle to, for making these devices, we don't didn't achieve that regime. Uh, so uh, we currently just uh, uh, work with like twenty to thirty percent uh, efficiency, which is good enough for most of the proof of concept experiments that uh, we want uh, uh, to do. Um, regarding uh, the gallium implantation, uh, we don't see uh, this as a detrimental effect. At the end of uh, uh, the fabrication, we uh, actually uh, uh, use a uh, final uh, step that actually etches away uh, a little bit of uh, material from, from the surface of, of the crystal. And we think that that removes most of the gallium uh, implantation uh, damage. And also uh, with, with gallium, the issue is that also it creates optical absorption. So we think that most of that uh, 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 is actually getting uh, removed. Um, and so it's not uh, 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 a problem for us um, so far. So that's why we uh, didn't uh, do very thorough investigation of how much gallium is there and how, how it affects us. And we have uh, an additional question from Paul here. Uh, is the encoding using polarization? And if so, how dependent are the devices slash coupling to polarization? Well, we will actually work on a single polarization. Uh, so we um, just uh, use uh, uh, actually TM polarized uh, cavities and TM, uh, so everything is TM uh, polarized. Uh, yeah, we don't use uh, polarization encoding. All right, so, okay, so moving forward. Uh, so this is a typical energy level diagram for ytterbium, which is uh, similar to all the other lanthanides. Uh, so uh, at uh, zero uh, magnetic field, basically uh, what you have, we have a crystal field uh, 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 splitting. Uh, so uh, basically uh, uh, st uh, this is, um, this this is a four, two have seven half uh, states. So this actually splits into four uh, double degenerate uh, uh, levels and there's the energy level splitting is on the order of 
of uh, uh, terahertz, a few, few terahertz. Uh, and uh, we work with uh, optical transition between these two manifolds, which happen at 284.5 uh, 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 nanometers. Uh, so actually this transition, and I, this is, there is a mistake here that should be from zero state to actually to the, the zero state here. Uh, so the rate is about uh, two kilohertz from zero to zero, but you, you should keep in mind there are actually uh, transitions from a uh, zero to the other uh, 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 to the other states uh, as well. Now, um, if you have uh, ethereum 171 atom, uh, which is, consists 14% of uh, the ethereum in this uh, 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 crystal, uh, what happens is that the zero field, you have a, a, a splitting, a hyperfine splitting. So uh, basically these are, uh, you can view them as uh, electronic uh, doublets. Uh, and however, if you, uh, uh, put uh, uh, ETHERB-171, which it has a nuclear spin one half. So this is actually the main reason why we use ETHERB-171 because it has a relatively simple hyperfine structure. So all these states actually split into four uh, states. Uh, actually, uh, two of them are degenerate. So what you see, you see uh, actually three states in the uh, ground state manifold. So um, one of them is uh, are what you call auxiliary states, which are up, up, or down, down. One uh, uh, arrow is electron spin, the other one is the nuclear spin. Uh, and um, we also have this uh, symmetric and asymmetric states, which is labor zero uh, and one G, uh, up, down, plus uh, down, up, or up, down, minus, down, up. Uh, and these are these two states uh, spaced by uh, 675 uh, megahertz. There's a similar uh, structure in, in, in the excited state. Also, um, uh, what, very important, uh, this transition, uh, uh, 675 megahertz is a clock or, or a ZFOS uh, transition. So there is insensitivity in magnetic field uh, uh, fluctuation. This is very important. So uh, uh, vanadium uh, is a, a highly magnetic material. So actually, when you think about why you your four as a crystal, uh, you have to think something similar to gallium arsenide, uh, uh, not something similar to, to silicon or, 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 or with diamond. So there's a lot of magnetic field noise in this, uh, uh, in this uh, crystal. And uh, these uh, arrows show the optical transitions that we work with. Uh, so this one, A, E, and I uh, are one polarization uh, um, along the, the crystal C axis. Uh, the other ones with blue are uh, perpendicular to crystal C axis. Uh, and uh, uh, we mainly work with the, the red uh, transitions that are actually also coupled to our uh, cavity mode. In special, this transition A is very important because it's our readout uh, transition. If you want to know about more about this work, I invite you to uh, uh, read this paper in Physical Review uh, B for a few years ago. Uh, now uh, we go ahead and probe uh, uh, single uh, ions in, in, the, in this nanophotonic uh, cavity. And now the energy, relevant energy levels are shown uh, uh, here. Uh, so um, we, uh, 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 the most important transition is this uh, A transition that we're actually using for, uh, uh, for readout. And also we use driving uh, on these two microwave transitions showed with, with black and also this transition, optical transition F that allow us to initialize the, uh, the, the atoms into this 1G uh, state. So uh, now if you, uh, if you uh, send laser pulses to, towards this device and look for fluorescence, so this is uh, shown schematically here, and then we change the, the frequency of the, of the laser uh, around the transition of uh, uh, ethereum, uh, you find this kind of spectrum where there have lots of uh, peaks uh, that, uh, in, uh, in fluorescence. Uh, and uh, if you compare to what you would expect, uh, you would see that uh, you would expect to see some transitions corresponding to different hyperfine uh, transitions in, in the ether 171 which is labeled A, uh, E, and I. There are some transitions corresponding to, um, to 173 isotope, uh, and also there are a lot of uh, uh, even isotopes of uh, ethereum basically, which are not uh, hyperfine uh, split, which uh, consist this this uh, spec, this big peak uh, in the middle. We are mainly working with ethereum 171 so we look at this transition A, uh, which actually corresponds to this uh, cluster of, uh, of atoms. Uh, and if you zoom in, you see that you see single uh, lines uh, and uh, you can uh, confirm that they're coupled to, to the resonator. So uh, while in bulk, we see a measurement the lifetime of about 270 uh, microseconds. Uh, when it's coupled to the cavity, we see a more than 100-fold uh, in, uh, 
reduction of the optical lifetime because of Purcell effect. So um, the lifetime becomes closer to two uh, microsecond. And then you can do a G2 measurement uh, and you can uh, identify that actually these photons are indeed uh, coming from a single emitter because we see anti-bunching and also we see some bunching effect, which is because we're dealing with a, a multi-level uh, uh, emitter. So, uh, so uh, generally in this, um, Talk. I will. Uh, I will talk about uh, working with ETRB one seven one on this uh, A uh, transitions, and actually we use um, a, a sequence of uh, of optical and microwave driving to initialize the the, uh, the atom in a specific state zero G or one G, and A is mainly our our readout uh, transition. So. Um, now you can start to do the typical experiments with single emitters. So first of all, you like to, to you can see optical radio oscillation. So you can initialize everything into into one G, and then you can send the laser pulse uh, that with different duration, and then you can uh, monitor the the uh, the fluorescence. Uh, this is all done on, on transition A, and basically you see that uh, we all observe optical radio oscillations depending on how uh, intense this pulse is. Uh, you can also do uh, optical uh, Ramsey measurements where you send two pi over two pulses and you measure the, the distance between them, and the T2 star that you measure is on the order of uh, 370 uh, nanoseconds. Uh, and we can also measure the spectral uh, diffusion and uh, uh, the spectral diffusion is on the order of one uh, megahertz. And uh, this is because of the choice of the, of the crystal. So uh, regarding the optical properties, uh, we have um, uh, a, a T2 star of say 370 nanoseconds. The 2T1 is uh, 4.5 microseconds. We are about a factor of 10 uh, away from being transform uh, uh, limited. Uh, and uh, we expect to have transformative photons with, when we get higher Purcell enhancement and better sample uh, uh, quality. Uh, and um, also want to mention that because this transition A is cyclic uh, and coupled to the cavity, we can do actually single shot readout with uh, a good uh, uh, fidelity. Now, uh, uh, but the spin, so uh, in um, our qubit is actually this, uh, this two, two states, 0G and 1G separated by 675 megahertz. And again, you can initialize uh, and then you can do a spin control uh, where you can see microwave Rabi um, uh, oscillation simply by, by using a, a single pulse. Uh, also, uh, by using two pi over two pulses, you can do a microwave Rabi measurement and the spin T2 star that you measure here is about eight uh, microseconds, which um, uh, is quite good uh, given the fact that you work in a very uh, uh, noisy, actually, uh, environment. Uh, so um, uh, the fact that we, we, we see this value is because we, we, we uh, uh, we have these clock transitions that we are uh, addressing. Uh, now you can obviously increase this uh, spin coherence with the dynamical decoupling. And uh, no questions, uh, Andre? Sorry. Yes. Uh, one from Elizabeth. How close to perfectly cycling is A? Uh, I guess the transition A. I don't uh, have an exact number. Uh, I think it's uh, it's more than ninety nine percent. So this is highly Purcell enhanced uh, uh, transition. I, I don't remember the, ex uh, hum, uh, the exact uh, uh, number. And one more question: What was the doping density of ytterbium in YVO four, and how many ytterbium ions uh, in resonant optical mode? Yes. So. Um, so this is actually was, uh, yeah, uh, I forgot to mention here. So this sample is actually nominally undoped. So we're working with a, a, a YVO sample that shouldn't have any ytterbium in it, but uh, yttrium is also always doped with all the rare earths. So you find the ytterbium uh, uh, in it. Uh, so we have a residual concentration of about uh, uh, 0.14 uh, uh, parts per million of, uh, of um, uh, uh, ytterbium. Uh, so, um, and there are about, about 20 parts per billion of ex ex uh, ex this ytterbium 171. So we expect about 20 ytterbiums in, in the device. And actually, if you count this, uh, this, the number of spectral lines that are on the order of 10. So, uh, yeah, this, this matches with the concentration. Yes, yeah, so about 10, it's about 10 atoms in, in, in the device. Okay, so moving forward, uh, yeah, so 
uh, you can extend the coherence with dynamical decoupling and uh, you can apply first like a CPMG sequence, for example, with n equals uh, eight, and you do see that uh, the coherence gets uh, like extended. Just to remind everyone, our Ramsey before was eight microseconds, which is roughly here. So see this, one's the, uh, this one is uh, significantly longer. Uh, and at the same time, you see some uh, some coupling to, to something else, which is quite uh, quite interesting. The, uh, this basically this this dips in in uh, in, uh, in coherence uh, uh, is. Um, uh, it's be because actually at a specific time interval uh, tau between the pulses we couple to, to something else in the uh, in the uh, in the crystal uh, so you can um, increase the uh, coherence time up to uh, 30 milliseconds using cpmg and our recently uh, experiment with xi8 is 16 uh, milliseconds and uh, I just want to mention that uh, I think this is the, the longest electron spin-like transition that has been measured inside the nanophotonic device. And this is like with, with everything. So it's a it's, uh, 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 device with electrodes cooled. Uh, so it's not just a, a single uh, defect in, in, in some pristine crystal. So this device, this is a, 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 an, um, a system where which has everything for quantum uh, networking. Uh, and the co coherence is maintained until 1.2 uh, uh, Kelvin, which is good if you want to work with helium for uh, cryostats. Okay, so now the next, uh, uh, so uh, first thing that we showed here is that we, we have like uh, good uh, uh, qubits. We still need to improve a bit the, the optical uh, coherence, but uh, this I think can be done with better in device engineering and I say uh, hopefully better uh, uh, samples. Uh, however, uh, the one thing that is missing is this like auxiliary memory uh, qubit, which is in case of diamond is a, a carbon uh, uh, 13. Uh, however, uh, we saw from uh, this uh, CPMG spectra that we are coupling to, to something. And the question is like, what does this ethereum qubit actually uh, uh, couple to? Uh, and um, the obvious reason is to look at the, the crystal uh, environment and uh, the uh, obvious uh, structures that we couple to is actually vanadium. So vanadium actually has uh, an electro, uh, um, electric quadrupole nuclear uh, structure. So basically uh, the... Uh, if you have a, 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 a nuclear spin, which is uh, uh, a large, so in this case, we have a seven half nu uh, nuclear spin, uh, you, you, when you have an, uh, a crystal that creates uh, electric field gradients, you end up having this uh, quadrupole uh, uh, structure uh, that basically depends uh, as the, the square of the um, of uh, uh, IZ. So the... Uh, in case of vanadium, you'll have like four, uh, two, three transitions and four uh, states. Actually, actually, this state is doubly degenerate; it's a doublet, and uh, the transitions three are three forty, six eighty, and ten twenty uh, uh, kilohertz. Um, also. Um, uh, I like to mention that uh, the vanadium also create a, a noise uh, on a, uh, on a, uh, in, in the environment on the ethereum. So even though uh, we are technically a zero field. There is some magnetic field noise in the in, in the crystal that makes actually the uh, ethereum interact with the uh, uh, vanadium. Uh, so there is uh, in, in, uh, the uh, leading orders. They have this type of of interaction uh, which in the S Z and the I X and the uh, I Z. So S Z is the electron spin of the ethereum. Uh, I X and I Z are the nuclear spin of the uh, of the vanadium, and this is mediated by this, uh, as they call, overhauser magnetic uh, field uh, created primarily by the uh, uh, van vanadium. Uh, now, uh, the issue is that this kind of interaction, because uh, the magnetic field is, is random, cannot be controlled, right? So uh, we see this, uh, uh, this features in the CPMG spectra, but uh, we cannot use this interaction to uh, create uh, gates because of the randomness of this uh, magnetic field. So in order to compensate this, we actually have to design a pulse uh, uh, sequence. So it's uh, similar to uh, uh, a pulse-pulse sequence that has been recently uh, uh, proposed for, for nitrogen vacancy centers, but we are actually using a, a sequence that is uh, uh, working at zero magnetic uh, uh, field. Uh, and we are applying an RF field that actually creates an alternating magnetic field uh, that uh, uh, makes this uh, interaction more uh, uh, controllable. So we have designed this, uh, this uh, pulse sequences that. Uh, 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 effectively create this type of, uh, of uh, Hamiltonian. So this depends on the uh, RF uh, field that we apply. And uh, then uh, we um, uh, 
I have interactions on the order of S plus I minus S minus I plus, where S plus is the electron spin operator for, for, uh, for uh, uh, the terbium and I plus and I minus are the uh, uh, operators for, for, the, uh, uh, for the vanadium uh, 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 system. And generally, uh, when we, we, we look at this, we look at a single uh, uh, pair of uh, two levels between, uh, in, within the uh, vanadium. Uh, also, I should mention that uh, uh, depending on the spacing uh, of the pulses in this uh, uh, transition, uh, you uh, uh, can uh, drive different, uh, uh, say, transitions within, within the vanadium. So uh, when, uh, whenever you have this uh, condition, one over two tau uh, is omega over two pi uh, k. Um, if k is uh, odd, uh, and actually you can induce uh, uh, RF induced uh, uh, transition. So actually this Hamiltonian is driving uh, 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 control transitions between uh, uh, the, the le quadrupole levels in the vanadium. When K equals uh, even, uh, we actually are only uh, driving uh, uh, transitions that are uh, uh, only determined by this noise in the environment. Uh, so they actually cannot be used uh, to, to uh, effectively uh, uh, control the, the interbium vanadium uh, interaction. So uh, I'd like to say that this, this sequence uh, has multiple purposes. First of all, it pol can pol use to polarize the vanadium ions. At the same time, it's a dynamical decoupling sequence. So it actually it suppresses the uh, ytterbium decoherence due to magnetic field. And at the same time, also it enables ytterbium vanadium uh, uh, gates. So now you can, what you can do, you can uh, uh, run uh, the sequence uh, similar to the CPMG spectra that I showed uh, before, but uh, it's done with this more complicated sequence. And uh, uh, if you uh, run the sequence and you change the, the, uh, the time between the, the pulses, this is what you see. So when RF is off, so we don't have RF field, we see basically these dips and these larger dips in the, uh, in, in the in the spectrum, which is with, with, with blue, which are similar to the dips that we are seeing in the CPMG uh, uh, spectrum. But now, if you uh, add the uh, uh, the odd uh, the the, the uh, RF, and you uh, you have this uh, uh, other transitions that pop up, see this the sharp peaks, which are actually some uh, RF uh, induced uh, transitions that happen when actually with uh, when uh, uh, K is an odd uh, number. So uh, the interesting part is that uh, we see that uh, these transitions are actually split into two uh, peaks. Uh, and uh, initially we are expecting to only see uh, one peak. Uh, and uh, as I said, you can actually use uh, this uh, type of uh, um, example uh, sequence to actually polarize the, the uh, vanadium uh, nuclei. Uh, and uh, if you polarize them, this is what you see. So you can actually polarize everything in this, this upper plus minus seven half states. And then you can do another, uh, say, uh, readout of uh, using also the, the, the example sequence. And you see that uh, this transition that corresponds to this peak actually uh, disappears while this one uh, uh, remains. And the same thing for this uh, transition at omega b uh, for k equals uh, uh, to three, uh, uh, we, we see a similar uh, effect. So this is very interesting, which means that actually we're talking to two uh, populations of vanadium inside this um, uh, this, this crystal, one of them that actually can be effectively uh, polarized and the other one that is uh, the polarization uh, doesn't work uh, as well. Uh, and uh, now, uh, in order to make sense of what's going on, you have to go back to the, to the crystal structure. And what we think is going on uh, is that uh, we have actually uh, four vanadium atoms, uh, which are actually, uh, so, okay, so let me go back. So this, this is the, the, the crystal structure of uh, YVO4. Uh, and uh, this ytterbium sits, uh, replaces a, a, an, an, an atrium. So this is with, with orange is ytterbium. And uh, with the blue, you have the vanadium. So there are four vanadium atoms that form the uh, tetrahedrum that actually K 
can uh, participate uh, in this in interaction uh, with, 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 that can be controlled via the pulse pulse uh, sequence. And uh, we think that uh, these four atoms actually are uh, the ones that that correspond to uh, to this ensemble that that can be uh, polarized. And uh, the reason uh, is that they being so so close to to the atom actually they experience a slightly different. Um, uh, electric field uh, a gradient because of proximity to, to ytterpium. And uh, this results in a different, uh, slightly different quadrupole uh, structure. So that's why their frequency uh, shifted. Uh, there are other atoms, uh, uh, vanadium atoms, for example, there are these two uh, uh, labeled with purple that are actually sitting on the top and bottom of ytterbium. Uh, these are actually even closer, but because of the uh, uh, geometric arrangement, they do not talk to the ytterbium. They are the same uh, uh, type of uh, uh, interaction. So uh, uh, now we see, uh, looking into the uh, constellation of, of, uh, of uh, other systems that have been investigating in a similar regime. So we think we are talking with a dense and localized uh, uh, spin bath. Uh, so uh, basically we have an ytterbium that is primarily talking with four vanadium uh, atoms that can be used as a quantum uh, register, while the other atoms, and I here I only showed the, the two, are creating magnetic noise uh, on uh, the location of uh, the, the ytterbium. Uh, and this can be compared with, uh, with uh, a system in diamond. For example, you can have uh, uh, nitrogen vacancy centers called, talking to carbon uh, 13. And here is more like a, a sparse uh, a nuclear spin bath that needs to be uh, uh, mapped every time you do an experiment. In our case, uh, this, this type of register is always the same and it always uh, uh, um, uh, around the, the, our, our qubit. Uh, other ex very similar experiments uh, uh, are actually done with quantum dots, or let's not say very similar, but uh, experiments along the same lines, where you have a single quantum dot that is uh, talking um, to with uh, about uh, 10,000 uh, 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 or, or 200,000 nuclear uh, spins in, a, in the Mars night uh, quantum dots. So the electron spin actually is delocalized uh, over a large um, set of uh, of, uh, um, of of nuclei, uh, and uh, uh, in this case, you can also see uh, similar physics, similar magnons. However, uh, the difference is that uh, uh, here you're not sure exactly to how many atoms you are you are, you are talking to. It's a very large uh, bat. So, in some sense, this system is like highly uh, deterministic, and and also it's uh, uh, highly uh, uh, controllable. So this is what we use for our uh, uh, spin register. So uh, basically, uh, so this is the, the ytterbium. Uh, say this is a qubit from a zero G and one G. Uh, readout happens to the, this excited state zero E. Uh, with the vanadium, we mainly use these two states, plus minus seven, five halves and my, plus minus seven halves uh, as, a, as a register. And uh, uh, basically we can uh, store uh, uh, our uh, quantum state in a superposition of this four vanadium uh, nuclei. So actually uh, we have uh, the, our uh, state, which is, which is actually a W state where we store the, the excitation, which is a, so say, a superposition of having a, 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 another uh, um, a vanadium uh, atom, which is actually in, in uh, a spin flip. Uh, so a typical experiment, I actually can use the example sequence to actually polarize this vanadium uh, um, Assemble and generally you polarize in a plus minus seven half state, and then you can actually use the sample sequence actually to to transfer the information with the constant states from, from the ytterbium into to, uh, uh, into the vanadium uh, ensemble. Uh, so first of all is to, to see that indeed we have a, a coherent interaction between uh, our qubit and our memory vanadium memory register. So first you you can uh, uh, initialize everything into, into plus minus uh, uh, seven halves. And then using the Zempel sequence, you actually should see particular similar to Rabi oscillations uh, in, um, uh, when, you, when you talk uh, within, within the ytterbium and, and, and the vanadium. So uh, we run the, we initialize in plus minus seven halves. And then we, uh, depending on the number of Zempel uh, periods, we can uh, uh, monitor the, 
of the population that uh, uh, is uh, transferred back and forth uh, with the venetimate turbine, you see this nice uh, uh, oscillations, which are the uh, signature of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the coupling to the magnum uh, mode or, or the spin wave uh, vanadium uh, mode. Um, also want to mention that uh, this interaction is tunable basically by change, uh, changing the RF field in, uh, uh, that we apply in our example sequence. We can actually uh, carefully tune this interaction. And this, uh, uh, for example, this point here uh, for a specific number of uh, periods in a specific uh, magnetic field uh, it corresponds to a swap gate. Uh, and to show that indeed we are uh, working with an ensemble, we can actually do an experiment where actually we can uh, polarize everything at plus minus uh, three halves, and then we can inject only one excitation into plus minus uh, uh, five halves. And uh, once we do that and we look at the Rabi oscillations, we see that they are uh, lower frequency and they are about um, basically a factor of, of two, which uh, indicates that indeed uh, we are dealing with with four uh, atoms because square root of uh, four is, uh, is is two. Uh, now we can store uh, the information in the this in the angle nuclear spin uh, register. So uh, basically, we can uh, uh, start with all the atoms in the uh, vanadium polarized in uh, plus minus seven halves, and then we prepare the ytterbium in the superposition of zero and one, and then we can apply. Uh, uh, a swap gate that transfers this excitation uh, to, to the vanadium. And this is a, 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 a superposition of uh, uh, these two states where zero V is plus minus seven halves. And this is the, the W state where we have only one excitation in the uh, ensemble. And once you do this, uh, basically, uh, the uh, state will start to oscillate at this frequency omega c, which is the frequency of the, the, the quadrupole. And uh, you observe uh, this type of uh, oscillations if you do, uh, if you map, uh, if you transfer back to relation to the ytterbium and do a readout. And uh, you can uh, see a decay of these oscillations on, with uh, a lifetime on the order of 58 uh, uh, milliseconds. Now, uh, this is our, uh, say, like a T2 star uh, uh, memory time. Uh, however, this can be uh, increased. Uh, and uh, uh, one way to increase is to, to swap the population into vanadium. And where the, the, it is the population is swapped into vanadium, we can actually apply uh, pi pulses on the ytterbium. And uh, this uh, uh, pi pulses create some, uh, some motional uh, narrowing on the ytterbium that actually reduces the magnetic noise that is coming from the uh, ytterbium that affects the, the, the vanadium. So we can extend this to about 225 uh, uh, microseconds. Uh, and uh, then you can also apply a pi pulses dynamically decoupling on the uh, vanadium while the excitation is stored. And this is uh, some special pi pulses that are applied via ytterbium drive. And this uh, re results in extending the, the T2 to uh, 760 uh, microseconds. Um, another interesting part is the T1 times. So the, uh, this uh, uh, state of, uh, uh, of the, the zero V uh, state, this uh, plus minus seven half actually has a quite a long uh, time is on the order of uh, uh, 0.5 uh, seconds. However, this W state, which is actually the position of plus minus seven halves and plus minus uh, 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 five halves has a, a T1 time that actually is affected by the relative decoherence of the, uh, the four vanadium uh, atoms. And uh, we measure that the T1 time is at the order of, I say, uh, 40 microseconds if we don't do anything. But again, if we can uh, um, do uh, control of first of the ytterbium and then of the vanadium uh, 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 manifold, we can extend this to uh, a, a few hundreds uh, uh, microseconds. Uh, and I can also uh, move ahead and can show uh, Bell state storage. So we can actually, you can create this type of uh, uh, a state in, in uh, of psi plus uh, between the uh, ytterbium and the vanadium. Uh, and this will undergo uh, parity oscillations into with uh, of psi uh, 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 minus. Uh, and this uh, will happen again at the, the quadrupole uh, frequency of the of the meridium. Uh, and uh, in this case, we we do see that uh, uh, we can uh, store bell states for uh, first for 8.5 microseconds, and this can be uh, extended to uh, 240 mi microseconds by dynamically decoupling the uh, ytterbium with an x y eight sequence. And this is because a lot of the noise actually is coming from the uh, in dipole, uh, magne in induced dipole moment in the uh, ytterbium. So, um, uh, so uh, and uh, these are the fidelities for, for storing the, the, the bell state. 
So my time has run out. So I was just say that uh, this is a very exciting system where we have a, a string coherence on the order of 30 milliseconds, uh, which is sufficient for long distance uh, network. Uh, the optical coherence need a factor of uh, 10 uh, improvement. And I think this can be done with better cavities uh, and uh, better samples. Uh, the advantage is that uh, we operate in this like microseconds to hundreds of nanoseconds optical lifetime, which has actually an attractive regime given the states of uh, optic and log optic modulators. The system is easy to drive coherent, coherently with uh, uh, optical uh, uh, pulses. Each device contains a few ethereum atoms that can be used. Uh, we have good coherence at uh, over uh, one Kelvin and that it doesn't require magnetic field. And uh, recently we showed that we also have this nuclear ensemble uh, magnon uh, quantum memory, which is a new regime for storing uh, quantum entanglement. At the same time is a deterministic and uh, reproducible uh, memory register that is identical to all uh, ethereum 171 uh, qubits. Once you have the ethereum 171 qubit, you also have the, 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 the memory, uh, which is identical for, for all the, the, the ethereum 171 ones. So with this, I, I will stop uh, here uh, and uh, just to uh, uh, go to, to my acknowledgement uh, uh, slides. Uh, so I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, the main like Andrei Ruschuk, Chunru uh, Ju and, uh, and, and uh, John He uh, Choi uh, and Jake Rockman who, who drove this experiment. Also Dr. Jen John Kingdom and Dr. Uh, John uh, Bartolomeu uh, who uh, helped us in understanding this uh, system at the initial stages of the experiment and also uh, all the other uh, uh, members of uh, our group and also uh, like to acknowledge our collaborators and funding sources. I think uh, I'm a, a few minutes over time, but uh, given that we have some questions, maybe it is not so bad. No, oh, excellent. Thank you, Andre. And uh, we are just a couple minutes over time, but maybe we have time for one quick question. If uh, Is that you raising your hand or clapping, Elizabeth? I think that's clapping. <laughs> clapping. Yeah, clapping. Okay. Um, in that case, I think I'll save my questions for our meeting uh, later this afternoon. I'm going to I'm going to ask one quick question. If yeah. I, so in your in the like the last data chart you showed where you were showing the uh, storage of entanglement and you have this metric of the Bell state coherence. Yeah, perfect. Okay, Bell state coherence. I'm just wondering what that metric is. And the fact that it goes up to a quarter is, <laughs> normally I would have thought I wanted something that went up to one, but I'm wondering if you have a different definition where a quarter is actually good. Well, yeah, so <laughs> um, I, I think this is, this is related to, to how we do, um, uh, how we actually, actually do this, uh, uh, this measurement. Uh, I don't think this is, um, uh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I think I have to get back to this in, in one on one meeting, maybe with you. I, okay, that's I, fine. I, I, I don't uh, remember exactly what this is. So I think it starts at, uh, I think we expect to start at the 0 0.25, but I have to, to, to look back exactly the reason. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk later. Okay. Great. Thanks. So, with that, uh, join me one more time in thanking Andre. <laughs>